What on earth is a DPU and why does it matter? Welcome to the second in our regular series of videos from the SCAN IT team comparing and contrasting the performance and suitability of enterprise grade tech. This video deals with data processing units or DPUs. This seems to be the latest buzzword in data center server technology with everybody talking about them, but what exactly is a DPU? Is it a glorified network interface card, also known as a NIC? Does it replace the NIC or do I need the DPU as well? And does does every server now need one? Well, subscribe to Scan IT channel and we'll do our best to answer these questions and more. Essentially, a DPU is an interface card, only it's designed to communicate with much more than just the networking elements of your infrastructure. Why, I hear you ask. Well, to explain that, we need to go back a while in networking technology terms to explain how and why the trusty network interface card has evolved into a data processing unit. A traditional server NIC has the job of communicating with the network switches and passing the packets of data to the host CPU for processing. This all works fine up to around 10 gigabit network speeds. However, above this, the influx of data packets starts to impact the CPU's ability to do this and run all the system's other applications effectively. So NIC capability was enhanced to include an element of offloading so that network traffic functions traditionally carried out by the CPU were now carried out on the NIC itself, much like how parallel processing tasks often bypass the CPU and system memory in favor of the GPU with its own dedicated memory. This change also supported the development of faster networks, such as 25 to 100 gigabit speeds, as the CPU as a bottleneck had been removed. As speeds continued to increase past 100 gigabits per second, another degree of offloading was required, and smart NICs were developed that provided programmable offloading using technologies such as RDMA, standing for Remote Direct Memory Access for InfiniBand connections, and Rocky, standing for RDMA over converged Ethernet that allow systems to communicate with less latency and higher throughput by not taking up CPU and operating system resources. Now, although network speeds continue to increase and they currently touch 400 gigabits per second, it was the evolution of software-defined technologies that drove the advent of DPUs. Software-defined storage, or SDS, relies on a management layer of applications that control how data is stored across virtual pools and how it can be dynamically moved between layers. Plus, things like deduplicating and compressing of data require a degree of processing, and this has to happen somewhere. Similarly, software-defined networking, or SDM, uses an application layer to define how data is transferred between programmable switches and onto network devices. And as SDS and SDN go hand in hand, the management's overhead increases rapidly. And this is what a data processing unit, or DPU, is designed for, to handle the RDMA and Rocky offloading tasks, but also to process the additional overhead of management software and acts like an endpoint within the server to keep the system CPU and memory free of any storage or networking tasks. Indeed, a DPU has its own dedicated CPU memory and includes the required network interfaces to achieve this, like a mini server within a server. Although DPUs are pretty new and could be called cutting edge, we all know that technology never stops evolving and already there are DPUs close to launch that contain a high performance GPU and an integrated PCIe 4 switch elements too. This creates a dedicated path for data transfer between the GPU and the network, enabling a whole new class of applications that involve AI-based networking and security, such as data leak detection, network performance optimization and prediction. But we'll leave these exciting advancements alone for now and come back to them in more detail in a future video. So now we know what a DPU is, we can move on to address how and when they should be used. Hopefully from the comparisons that we've just run through, you can see that only a single interface card is needed in a server, either a NIC, a smart NIC, or a DPU, as they all take care of the basic networking functions. Whether you need a full DPU will be down to the type of applications and storage that you're using. If your servers don't require high performance, then a standard NIC will be fine, as the host CPU and memory will carry out the data processing functions. If you've got demanding applications, then offloading onto a smart NIC will see throughput and latency improvements. 
Only if software-defined processes that generate a management overhead are a key part of your infrastructure does a DPU come into play. So there we have it. We hope you found this video guide to DPUs helpful. But of course, if you still got questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with the SCAN IT team. Or if you want to discuss any requirements you may have. And as we mentioned at the start, we'll have more of these videos from SCAN IT. So keep your eyes peeled for those and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss them. Also, let us know any particular topics that you might want further information on or demystifying as we'd love to tackle them. See you next time. Thank you.